Step one, find your balance and choose your preferred supporting leg. Step two, ensure that your non-supporting leg is bent and tucked up behind you and that it is not touching or leaning on the supporting leg. Step three, with your head facing forward and your eyes looking ahead, bend your supporting leg and lean forward while pushing up from the ball of your foot to launch forward. Make sure that you pump your bended leg to create momentum. Step four, swing your arms in motion with the hop. Step five, land on the ball of your foot with your leg bent to catch your weight. The teacher is either on the right or left or in front of the student to monitor and observe the correct technique. The teacher will need to make sure that it is made clear to the student that the technique is incorrect. We will now continue to give a demonstration of the common errors and incorrect techniques. As you can see, the student is not using their arm to find their balance. To correct this, the teacher gives verbal and physical instructions on how to effectively use their arm to assist in the balancing. Another example would be that their leg is touching the ground with their eye looking down. Reiterate your key teaching points by reminding students to keep their head up and eyes full, as well as bending and tucking their non-supporting leg behind them. Instead of hopping off the ball of their foot, they are launching off a flat foot. The teacher must demonstrate how to correctly use the ball of their foot to launch. The student's arms are not swinging in time and therefore not getting the full momentum. To correctly show this, the teacher moves her arms in motion with the jump. In this scene, the teacher shows that landing on a straightened leg and flat foot is no good. Instead, the teacher emphasizes that you must bend your leg to catch your weight and to prevent injury, like so. If a situation arises where a student has a mobility or motor deficiency skill, we can modify the fundamental movement according to the student's ability for them to participate efficiently. An example of the modification would be a two-foot jump and will be demonstrated using the key teaching points. Step one, bend knees. Step two, bend arms and bring up to chest height. Step three, lean forward and roll off the ball of the foot. Step four, bend and extend legs to launch forward. Step five, land on the ball of both feet, ensuring that the legs are both bent to catch the weight. After this instructional video, you should be proficient in the skill of hopping. Hopping is an integral skill in many different sports, such as netball, basketball, long and triple jump, or even small games such as hopping relays or hopscotch. We will now demonstrate how this skill can be applied in hopscotch. In this game, equipment that is required is very limited to either chalk or tape and a pebble for game modifications. In terms of this presentation, we will be using a flat, leveled concrete surface. Prior to this, we used bark to draw the hopscotch and we'll be using that to mark the play area. As mentioned earlier, hopping can be modified to suit the learners in your class. The same alteration applies to games. If a game of hopscotch is too easy, you could challenge students by introducing a pebble, so students must jump over this pebble. This then forces them to create more momentum during the hop. This also shows you that they are then proficient in the skill of hopping. As a teacher, you are expected to rove around the class to ensure the students are mastering the technique. While correcting any student's techniques, it is important to be aware of student-teacher proximity to be able to observe the te techniques and provide constructive feedback. This was demonstrated throughout the video.